Good morning everyone and welcome to this week's cross training lesson from Christchurch Plegari at home. I hope you've had a good week and at least most of you will be back at school if not every day but at least some of the days of the week and I'm sure you're enjoying getting out and seeing your friends and your teachers again. Um, last week with Dorothy you looked at the story of Paul who um, presented his case to King Agrippa um, about why he was preaching about Jesus because the Pharisees were trying to stop him. And um, King Agrippa um, didn't find him guilty. He just said that he was crazy. And um, King Agrippa and Festus agreed that they would send Paul to Rome to come before um, Nero, who was the ruler at that time, to present his case. And most of the journey would have was done um, on a ship. So this week we're going to look at the story of Paul's journey from Caesarea um, trying to get to Rome. Um, but before we look at the story, I'd like us to just talk um, about the sea and if you think of a map of South Africa um, we have almost 3,000 kilometers of coastline in South Africa right from the west coast the Orange River where we um, border with Namibia all the way down and around the Cape and then up the Indian Ocean to Mozambique we have a lot of coastline, a lot of people live in cities along there, a lot of people use the sea for swimming in, for sailing on, for recreation, and then a lot of ships pass by our coastline on the way to and from Europe and the east when they're trading. So we've got a, a long coastline. And we have an organization in South Africa called the National Sea Rescue Institute um, and they mostly are volunteers and whenever someone gets into trouble um, on the coastline in the sea whether they're swimming or sailing or a ship passing by um, they'll put an emergency call to the National Sea Rescue Institute who will go and help them. So um, some of the boats that they use are these um, smaller inflatable boats that they'll go and help people who are swimming or sailing close to the shore and then they also have bigger boats that can go out into the deeper sea um, to help ships and sailing boats that are in the deeper sea um, and then they don't only help people they also sometimes go out to help animals that um, are in distress. So they'll go out to help whales that have been tangled up in fishing nets and they'll carefully cut the, the nets off the whale so it can swim again. And then sometimes they'll go um, to the beaches where people will tell them that turtles or seals and animals have been trapped in, in nets and they'll cut them free and make sure that they're well and then let them go again. So they do amazing work um, along the coast. But what they also do um, is they teach as many children as possible throughout the whole of South Africa how to safely be near water, whether it's a dam or a river or a swimming pool or whether you're on holiday at the sea, um, they'll go around, they train lifesavers at the sea, how to help people on the beach. And then they'll also, if they came up to Johannesburg, they'd teach children, if they were by a swimming pool or a dam or a river, how to safely help someone who is in distress and needs help. And so, um, maybe later your parents could Google a bit about um, tips on, on how to keep yourself safe while you're trying to help somebody who's in distress in the water. 
Right, the story of Paul's trip from Caesarea to Rome is found in Acts chapter 27. Paul was finally on his way to Rome. It was not in the way he thought he would go. He was not traveling as a free man on his way to visit friends. Paul was under heavy Roman guard, a prisoner. He was on his way to see Emperor Nero. One of the soldiers in charge of Paul was an officer named Julius. He could see that Paul was not dangerous. He treated him kindly. When Paul was put on board ship to go to Rome, Julius said Luke and some of Paul's friends could travel with him. They changed ships going from port to port. Over and over again, they ran into bad weather. Finally, the storms made sailing almost impossible. The little ship carrying Paul had found a harbour on the island of Crete. Paul told them, If we don't stop here for the winter, we will lose the cargo and the ship, but our lives as well. The owner of the ship was in a hurry to deliver his cargo of grain to Rome. He did not listen to Paul, and they sailed on. Before long, a very strong wind caught the ship. There was nothing the crew could do. For more than a day, the storm tossed the ship. Waves swamped over its decks and the crew threw cargo overboard. The sky was dark for many days. The captain could not see the moon or stars. They were lost at sea. All the crew were terribly seasick. No one had eaten for a long time. Paul told them, Men, be brave. None of you will die. Last night an angel of the God told me I would stand before the emperor. None of you will die. Instead, we will land on an island. All of a sudden, there was a terrible grating sound. The boat ripped open on the rocks and it started breaking up. Jump ship, they called. The waves crashed all around them. Each man made it to the beach safely. That was all that mattered. Once on shore, they found that they were on the island of Malta. They were close to Italy after all. The people who lived there were very kind. Paul was safe and he would get to Rome after all. So in today's true story from the Bible, we see how Paul's faithfulness in telling people about Jesus led him into some dangerous situations. But Paul understood that God ruled over everything that happened to him and that Paul was not reckless um, in what he did. Um, he had advised the owner and the captain um, of the ship that, that the weather was too bad and that they should not continue on their journey to Rome until the weather improved, that they should stay where they were. But um, they didn't take his advice. They carried on with the journey. And we need to understand that God is in control of every day of our lives and he uses all situations even the dangerous and difficult ones to bring glory to himself and to give us opportunities to tell people about Jesus. Paul knew that God would take him wherever he needed to go and would keep him safe and alive as long as he needed to so that Paul could complete the work 
that God had given him to do. Sometimes we might be afraid to talk to people about Jesus because it can cause problems. People can get angry with us. They might no longer want to be our friends. And they might even try and hurt us. But if we know and love Jesus, he's given us a very important job to do, and that's to tell others about him. Sometimes this will be hard and may, may cause problems, but like Paul, we must trust that God, even when it's dangerous, will look after us and take care of us. So I just Trust that God will be with you in the week ahead. He'll watch over you and your families. And let's just um, say a prayer before we say goodbye for this week. Oh Lord, we just thank you for this story from Paul's life, from his journey from Caesarea to Rome, how we see what dangerous situations he was in, but that you were faithful in your promise to keep everyone on the ship safe and alive, even though the ship was wrecked and they had to swim ashore. We just thank you how we see that you were faithful in keeping them safe and that Paul was able to continue his journey to Rome. Pray that you would be with us in the week ahead in whatever we do. Lord, that we would be brave in telling people about you, about your love. Be with our families, watch over us, and take care of us. Thank you that we belong to you, and we pray this in the name of Jesus and through the ministry and power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. So thank you for being with us this week. And we'll see you again next week as we look at another story from the life of Paul. Goodbye.